Hey everyone, I'm Nathan, and today we're going to be talking about The Wizard, The Witch, and The Wild One. This is my second time making a video on this podcast. It's by Worlds Beyond Number, a collaborative effort between Brennan Lee Mulligan, Erica Ishii, Abria Iyengard, and Lou Wilson. It stars three characters, which are our titular Wizard, Witch, and Wild One. They just finished their first season, and so I wanted to give a little wrap-up about what happened, my thoughts on the finale, and sort of just explain the premise of the show again. But yeah, I did a little cute drawing to go along with it because it's very hard to talk about in podcast in a visual medium. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the speed draw. Spoilers and summary ahead, you've been warned. I open with a bunch of doodles that I'll explain later, but I actually want to start off by talking about what this show is actually about because I don't think I did a good enough job explaining the podcast in my first video on this series. So just for a little refresher, this story is about three childhood friends that are in a Ghibli-esque fantasy world. Our our story follows three childhood friends who become estranged and then meet again as adults before forming an adventuring party. All three of these kids find themselves at a witch's cottage in the middle of the summer for vastly different circumstances. The first is Ame. She is the witch's apprentice and she's been living here the longest. Orphaned yet still very optimistic, this wonderful character has a lot in store for her as she trains to become a witch and she is very excited when another child comes to stay with Grandmother Wren during the Faithful Summer. And this other character is Suvi. She is the child of these powerful wizards of the Citadel. The Citadel is a giant glass tower metropolis in the middle of a vast desert, and during an attack on a mysterious night when they were vulnerable, uh, the parents fled through a portal in order for their child to be safe while they investigated who was responsible for attacking their home. And the third and final final member of our friend group is Ursulon, who is actually a spirit from another world, who is lost inside the human world, kind of like a reverse spirited away situation where he can no longer go home. Ursulon dreams of one day growing up to have honor and becoming a knight. The three friends share several core memories and important moments of their development in this crucial time as they begin understanding the world around them. And then when the summer ends, eventually Suvi finds out that her parents have died and and she gets taken back to the Citadel by her surrogate aunt figure, um, where she is to be raised. And then Ursulon ends up leaving shortly after, and the three don't meet each other again until adulthood, which is where this story starts. So Suvi has recently graduated from apprentice to adventurer in the Citadel, while Ame has never even been outside of Toma and has been taking care of Grandmother Ren this entire time. Grandmother Ren is now on her deathbed. Suvi travels to say thank you and goodbye to the woman who was so kind to her one summer during a very informative year of her life. Ame becomes the new Witch of Toma. A mysterious and dangerous spirit named the Stranger shows up, and after Ame asks it to leave and come back after a year and a day, she quickly realizes that she's been cursed and some of her memories are missing, so she and Suvi have to travel to go see their old friend Ursulon. The girls find him as a disillusioned actor instead of as a knight, and he sold the sword that can break the curse to a wizard for food. After a quick boat ride in a fight with a demon, they see how much they've changed. Suvi's been indoctrinated into very pro-military propaganda and is frustrated with how innocent Ame is. Ursulon's sort of caught in the middle between the two. He just wants his friends to get along. The sword's in the clutches of a solitary wizard who has imprisoned a giant spirit of the ocean whose wife is a nature spirit that's trying to destroy the entire city to get him back. Since witches keep the balance between the spirits and the humans, she negotiates terms for peace and her and Ursulon try to free the water spirit and she does this like amazing ritual trying to like protect both humankind and the spirits. It's so great. Now that you actually know what happens, maybe it'll make you more interested in the drawing. I wanted this to be a piece that's an ode to the relationship between Suvi and Ame. I love their dynamic so much. And even though they're like really great friends, I can just feel that there's this potential universe where they're forced to sort of be enemies because Suvi is very much like not liking or vibing with spirits and if she had it her way, I think she would like imprison them just so that they could be used for military tactics. It's just such a great storytelling. I love all of the stakes and it's so beautifully told between all of the players. And I also like inspired me and reminded me of Wicked and the relationship between Glinda 
and Elphaba, so that was also an influence for this piece. As I shrink this hat, you might have noticed that things look a little bit differently. I'm actually not using Procreate. My iPad that I've had for five years finally bit the dust and the motherboard isn't working anymore, so because of that, I have to use a different tablet that I'm borrowing from a friend because, you know, technology is expensive and I have to save up to get a replacement. So in the meantime, this was drawn on Adobe Fresco and this program, I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut because my mama said if, I, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. So that's why you can actually see the lasso tool, whereas on Procreate it's invisible, so the screen capture really doesn't, you know, pick that up. I mean, it looks good. I enjoy, like, these folds that I'm drawing on Suvi's dress and her staff comes out really well. Like, the piece works. It's just very difficult to use and it feels like an artist was not involved in the making of this software. You might have noticed that these designs are different from the designs that I showed you towards the beginning of the video, and that's because these are their new designs, and this is supposed to be sort of like set in the future. We're already in season two, and the friends are friending, and everybody's getting along, uh, so this is like a, you know, more cutthroat adversarial relationship AU that's going on here. I'm really excited to see how the story unfolds. There's something so special about having only three player characters, because most actual play series for Dungeons and Dragons are like really, really full. Like there's a lot of people involved. And so because of that, the character development can be sort of slow and the episodes tend to be really, really long. And there aren't these like key arcs. I don't know. It's just you're able to dive in much uh, deeper when you have less characters. And I just really appreciate that because character development makes me thrive and clears my skin. I'm starting to put in the background. I initially wanted this to be a window, but I end up making it a clock tower so it's a more direct parallel to Wicked uh, because I feel like the themes of that musical really sort of play into the relationship between these two women. And then also on top of that, um, this is a new program, so that was really hard. So I ended up putting that on hold. There was like this bleed tool that kept kind of like confusing me. So I was like, I'm just gonna color the characters, but then that too was like just so different. This project ended up being much longer than if I was using a pipeline that I was more familiar with. Hopefully I will be getting a new iPad so that I can have Procreate again soon, but until that day comes, do any of you know any free drawing apps or like very cheap drawing apps that aren't monthly installments, like one-time payments are okay, that you use or that you would recommend? Because I am in the market for it. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below. Also, so I adore that they're both red and blue as their dynamic, it fills my heart with great joy. And I also must say, if you follow them on Patreon, Ame's Witch Class for 5e is like available and it's amazing. I have always wanted to play a witch in Dungeons and Dragons and it's such a great homebrew. I have never found a homebrew witch class that has satisfied me because they always feel like diet sorcerer or diet warlock or diet wizard and not specifically a witch and it's so unique and specific. Go check it out. 10 out of 10 would recommend. I'm just finishing up some small details on the characters like the hair and then making the skin more textured and adding some more shadows and finishing boots. It's just little stuff from here on out. After I address Suvi's hair, I quickly try to get all of the shadows and the lighting to make somewhat some sense before I add her jewelry that she has. And then, yeah, just some lines here or there, cleaning everything up before I dive into the background. Flash warning for adjustment layers. This ends up going by really quickly as well because I end up just grabbing a clock and some gears off of Google. I was so done with this program um, that I decided to just, you know, make the background be finished as quickly as possible. I add some shadows and and some glow just to make them actually feel like they're in this space instead of being stickers on top of the background. And this is the finished image. Love the end product. Did not enjoy the journey here, but that's all you're going to hear from me. That's all you're going to hear from me. What did you think of my recap of The Wizard, The Witch, and The Wild One season one? Let me know your thoughts down below. If you're listening to it, I would love to hear your thoughts, especially on the parts that I was not able to cover during the video. And if you haven't listened to it, 
I promise you there are some like, I don't know, minor spoilers that I said in this video, but to be honest, I think that like everything I've said will just help you be able to just dive straight in and understand what's going on. I would definitely check it out. It's a great time. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you really want to support the channel, check me out on Patreon, link in the description, where for just like $4 a month, you can help me get a new iPad so I can have fun drawing and you can have your name in the end credits. And speaking of end credits, here they are now. Special thanks to Anna Sophia Boyd, Axelius the Great, Blue Uwu, Kay Clark, Christopher, Dabadudu, Dax Quinn, Emoe, Gay Jaris, J. Johar, JD Boy 2000, Johan, Kitsune Chibiko, Lucky Paradox, Melon, Mild Mothman, Native Runner, Orion Amastasia, Pinecone, Potion Cellar Door, Rin, Scorching Ray, Sir Camelot, Smalls the Sax Jammer, Shernanigans, Tad the Turtle, Tarthalinor, The Real Michael, Thumper Daytime, Thony, Tortilla Chips, Tuesdays Anyways, Tundra Katie Bean, and Tuppence Pies. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nathan, and I'll upload a new video real soon. <laughs> Bye! Oh my gosh, I never explained the doodles. It's because of the program. It's because I could not figure out the program, and so I was doodling to figure out what the buttons did.